Hello, my name is Laura. I'm a visual artist and I'm also a teacher. I'm really delighted to be working with you all on this series of online video workshop visual art tutorials. The series of workshops have been generously commissioned by the Courthouse Arts Centre Tinnahealy, County Wicklow, and it's funded by the Arts Council of Ireland. In this series of workshops, we're going to explore a range of art making techniques and processes that artists, designers and creative practitioners use in their own practices. We're going to be looking at colour, line, form, shapes, textures and materials. Most importantly, in every workshop, we're going to have the chance to explore our own creativity and imaginations. I'm really looking forward to working with you all in this series and I can't wait to see your own imaginative responses. Please share some images of your work with the Courthouse Art Centre Tina Healy. Thank you. Before we get started with our paint mixing, we're going to take a look at the colour wheel. The colour wheel is really helpful to understanding colours and how they relate to each other. The primary colours, red, blue and yellow, form a triangle surrounded by the secondary colours, orange, purple and green. Opposite colours on the colour wheel relate well to each other. They're called complementary colours. So we have red and green, purple and yellow, and blue and orange. Do keep the colour wheel in mind as we move through the four activities in this lesson. Thank you. In our first activity, colour strips, we're going to make a wide range of colours using a wide range of materials an absolute rainbow of colour strips. The materials we'll use are red, blue and yellow paints and some white, red, blue and yellow food colouring diluted with some water, nail polish, turmeric paste, kitchen paper, old cardboard, card, old envelopes, newspapers and paintbrushes. First let's make our colour strips. We're going to use an old cardboard box, old envelopes, paper, ruler, scissors and pencil. Very carefully mark out your measurements. Try and keep all the strips the same width. Artists and designers use notebooks all the time as a really useful resource. We gather ideas, test, write, doodle, explore in our notebooks. You can use this notebook to document the colours that you create and the materials you use. Feel free to doodle and write. Follow the steps to create your own notebook that you can use for many different projects. We can use lots of different materials, not just paints, markers, colouring pencils, to explore colour. Why not use old nail varnishes and see what effect you get. The gloss of the nail varnish gives a really nice shine. 
Also, turmeric powder is a fantastic dye and it smells really good and has healing properties. Shake some turmeric powder into the lid of a jam jar and add a little bit of water to create a paste. You can use your food colouring uh, dyes in just the same way as you would with any other regular paint using the red, yellow and blue food colourings. You can explore colour mixing. And dipping the, the colour strip into the water to see how the colour fixes to different cards, the envelope, the card, the paper and different absorbency rates. Explore and enjoy and get messy. You can also mix materials. Painting with turmeric paste onto your colour strips and with some food colouring. See what effects you get. The turmeric gives a really nice kind of splattered consistency to your work. Enjoy and don't forget to use your notebook to document and explore and record your colour experiments. Regular felt tip markers can be a really nice watercolour effect. You can use a, the marker as a regular marker and then add water and see what effects you can get. Also, you can use your markers as regular markers to get very bold colours on some of your colour strips. You might also decide to focus on one colour to experiment with a range of your colour strips. I decided to look at blue more carefully. I used blue paint, diluted blue food colouring, concentrated food dye straight from the bottle and some white paint and a blue marker. I used lots of my colour strips to create lots and lots of different tones of blue. White paint is fantastic to give you an extra range in your colour mixing. When you have used up all of your colour strips with lots of different experimentation, with dyes, with diluted dyes, with paints, markers, nail varnish, turmeric powder, maybe some eyeshadows, maybe some lipsticks, the choices are endless really. Then start arranging your colour strips into lots of different patterns and combinations. It's really up to you. Have fun experimenting with different layouts and combinations of your colour strips. Once you have decided on the layout that you like, start gluing them into place. Be really careful with the glue so that your um, display sheet doesn't get smudgy and marked. You can use lots of different paper types to create your display for your colour strips. Brown wrapping paper, brown cardboard can look really nice also. I've used my masking tape roll as a template to make a sun design. Lay out your strips as you wish. For this one I've decided to make a colour wheel, a rainbow of colours really, and carefully glue these into place. Once you've finished your colour strip displays, don't forget to hang them up somewhere and display them. These abstract colour designs and patterns can be really nice as a wall display. Enjoy making. Kitchen paper is a fantastic material. It's so absorbent. So it's excellent for exploring paint mixing and food colouring dye. You can fold a piece of kitchen paper into quarters and dip it into your leftover paint mixing tray. See what colours are absorbed by the kitchen paper. Then you can get your food colouring um, mixtures back out and start to blend the food dye mixture into your paint. Super abstract, super playful.
Then with your markers, you can add some colored sections to a square of kitchen paper. Super playful, really experimental. And then you can do a tie dye style technique. You can fold and wrap your kitchen paper and dip it into the food dye water. Allow it to absorb some of the dye and seep up the kitchen paper surface. You can turn it around and dip into another food dye container. Do be careful, your hands are going to get very, very messy doing this, but eventually food dye will wash off and it's completely safe. Enjoy exploring and having a mess with colour. The kitchen paper squares are really bright and colourful and can make a really exciting wall display. Once they're dried, you can make a frame to display your work. Using an A4 white piece of paper, measure out a square window on your A4 sheet using a ruler and pencil. Carefully cut out your square and then place your kitchen paper colour into the window. Gently masking tape your kitchen paper to secure it into place. And you've got really bright, interesting and quite sophisticated wall hanging. Enjoy. Our next activity is an expanded, giant version of taking a line for a walk. Instead of using white paper, we're going to use a sheet of baking paper. This transparent see-through surface can look fantastic against a window, letting the light through. As well as our baking paper, you're going to need your three food colourings in red, blue and yellow, again mixed with water, a selection of regular markers, some nail varnishes, and your primary colours and white in paint. Newspaper, masking tape and a pencil will be handy too. Firstly, let's take a line for a walk. Spread out your baking paper and start doodling with your pencil. Now start colouring some of the smaller sections using your markers and using your nail varnish. Do keep in mind complementary colours as you're working. Notice how the marker and the nail varnish react very differently on the baking paper. I'm using food colouring mixed with water to colour in some of the random shapes in my taking a line for the walk. You can see how the water doesn't react well with the baking paper and it resists. It leaves really interesting marks. You can also use your finger to smudge and press the colour into the surface of the paper some more. Enjoy mixing your paint colours um, and white again is fantastic to add tone. I'm keeping my complementary colours in mind while I'm working seeing how they react with each other and then what happens when I can't put complementary colours next to each other. You can get really strong and interesting clashes of colour too. Enjoy mixing, matching and having fun with this pretty huge taking a line for the walk. Your large scale taking a line for the walk on a roll can look really nice displayed on a window at your home where the light can come in and um, catch the colours. This is something you could do with your whole family. It's such a long roll of baking paper. There's lots of fun to be had and lots of continuing and exploring more colours. It could be a challenge to see if you can get to the end of the roll with tons and tons of different colours. Enjoy. To zoom in on our objects for this activity, we're going to need a viewfinder. These are really simple to make and are really useful for lots of art activities. So using a piece of old card or an old cereal box, map out and measure a square shape. Not too big. Mine is six centimetres by six centimetres. 
very carefully cut out your window in your viewfinder and you're ready to go. For our next activity, we're going to create a small scale colour detail of complementary colour sets using everyday objects that we have at home. For this activity, we're going to need an old cereal box or some old card from a food container, a ruler, pencil, scissors, our primary colours in paint and some white. You can use regular poster paints, acrylics, watercolours, whatever you happen to have at home, a selection of brushes, a cocktail stick, a lollipop stick, masking tape and some cotton wool and kitchen paper and water for keeping your work area clean and tidy. Let's get started. So we're thinking back to our colour wheel and complementary colour sets. Our first set that we're going to work with is blue and orange. Set up your scene and then use the viewfinder to get super close and zoomed in. For this activity we're not worried about representing what we see. We're not worried about how closely your painting is going to look to the actual things. What we're concerned about is getting a really strong range of colours and shades. We're going to try and make lots of different tones of our blue and orange, just like are in the viewfinder scene. On your A4 piece of paper, and remember, ideally your paper that you're using is nice and thick from a sketch pad, ideally. And map out your grid, the same measurements as your viewfinder. So I'm using six centimeters by six centimeters square, and I'm going to paint within that. And you're going to paint what you see using your blue, red, yellow, and white and trying to get as close to the colours that you see as you possibly can. Masking tape is really handy to tape down the edges of your square to get a nice clean line. Don't forget to use your mini artist notebook to record your colours. Water helps to get different tones and shades of colour too. I'm using water to get the plastic reflective quality of the blue plastic container. Now I'm taking a look at the complementary colours of red and green. I found this plant at home which is perfect, red flowers and green leaves, but use whatever you can get your hands on. Maybe a red cup and a green leaf, whatever you have to hand. Don't forget to use your viewfinder to zoom in and get really close to a part of the object where you can see both green and red. You don't have to use just a brush for your painting. All sorts of objects can be used as um, paint brushes or mark making tools. I'm using a cocktail stick to get nice detail of the veins of the leaves. Explore and experiment with different bits and pieces that you might have at home that could come in handy for this. For my complementary colours of purple and yellow, I'm using a clean yellow sock and a purple marker. I've masked uh, off my grid on my sheet to keep nice clean lines. You can do a whole series of these, playing with complementary colours, clashing colours, single colours to get lots of different tones. Your endless choices for this activity. Enjoy. Thanks so much for taking part in today's Exploring Colour workshop. So we got quite a lot covered in today's session. We looked at the colour wheel did a quick recap on our primary colours and secondary colours. So primaries are reds, blues and yellows. Our secondaries, orange, green and purple. We looked at the theory of uh, complementary colours and 
brought some of these um, understandings into our four different activities today. So as you can see on my studio washing line, we have our colour strips work. So making lots of different strips and playing around with how we lay those out um, as a finished piece. So they're super abstract, very playful. You could substitute the strips for little circles and have a, a whole cluster of different colours. You could explore um, complementary colours in your layout. Um, in our colour strips, we were playing with turmeric powder and nail varnish as materials. So keep exploring, keep experimenting, be bold, be brave with the materials you use. Um, then we did some kitchen paper work. As you can see, the loose sheets are up here and also the finished framed piece um, using food colourings and paint and markers and water. Kitchen paper is fantastic with its absorbency. So again, very playful kind of like kitchen paper tie dye work. Then we have our more um, figurative, more close to close to um, the object in our in our work on our um, small scale painting of the object, the plant, um, the sock and marker, the orange and the plastic container, and all of those were in our complementary colours. You could experiment and do larger uh, versions. You could make your viewfinder larger to have more of the object in your work. Um, and then our other activity was our tracing paperwork here. Taking a line for a walk. It's never ending. You could continue that. You could get rope in the whole, um, the whole household to help you to get the whole roll of paper covered in a in a never never ending line going for a walk. And it can be a gorgeous colour colour catcher in the light on a window. Um, and our notebook that we made as well, you can keep adding to that, sharing your colours, sharing your observations, your experiments, your tests, your samples. So thanks so much for taking part. I really enjoyed exploring colour through these activities and I hope you do too. Please share your artwork with the Courthouse Art Centre Tinahili. We're really looking forward to seeing what you create. Thank you.